Welcome to the Honor Bound alternate and deleted scenes video. I'm assuming if you're watching this that you enjoyed the miniseries and are looking forward to what didn't make it in. Uh, I find it very interesting because in some cases there were radical changes. Uh, in other cases the changes are very subtle uh, but still noteworthy. Okay, let's get the uh, show on the road. The first scene we're going to see was cut from the video mostly for time. Uh, it was primarily about Jack waking up and encountering his dad, uh, who has arrived late at night. And so when Jack wakes up, he finds his father. Um, the interesting thing about th these deleted scenes uh, are what I call little character moments. Uh, Jack talking to himself, uh, having trouble with his shirt, you know, making wry observations. Uh, you know, this was to give his character uh, those little moments that make him uh, who he is. Uh, as far as his encounter with uh, his dad, uh, there was nothing wrong with the scene, uh, but essentially um, his dad is sitting in a chair, they have this conversation, and, uh, and then the scene ends. And we went back after looking at the footage and wanted to add a little bit of a, a greater dynamic. And so essentially we moved the scene in front of his library where the dad is now looking through his books he's doing some sort of research and then when Jack encounters him uh, they have this conversation it was an opportunity uh, for a little bit of movement and a little bit of uh, more visual interest uh, than what we shot originally but again had we not reshot the scene it would have been fine to put into the miniseries I thought the acting by everyone was was excellent Dad! I think you are coming home. God, when'd you get in? At in 3 o'clock this morning. Oh, early this time, huh? Looking great, Jack. Looking great. So are you. Thank you. Oh. So how was the trip? Tell me about it. Well, there isn't too much to tell you, Jack. You know the nature of my job. I can't tell you too much about anything, but uh, there is something that's been on my mind. And What's that? I feel this is a good time. How about this evening you and your sister get together with me and I'll cook supper like old times sake? Would make me really happy if we can get together this evening. Sure, yeah, that'll be excellent. I have a mission coming up soon, and uh, I don't know how long it's going to take me away. Oh, again? Yeah, Come on, you just got back. I know, but it's the nature of the job. Looking forward to it, Jack. Really am. Hey, we've missed you, you know, when you're going off again. I, I know, I've been giving it some thought, and, well, life is Too funny short. sometimes, yeah. And I just, I would like to think that, well, we had a good time together. All right, definitely. You know, I'll get Shara. We'll be back here. With All right, Jack. I'll go get ready, and I'll see you later. All right. Okay. What are you doing here? You don't belong in this game. Oh, excuse me. No, no, it's my fault. It's my fault. Listen, I've been standing here watching you, and I think we have some things in common. I think it'd be good if we can talk, but we have to talk someplace alone. 
Look, this isn't the time or place. I'm busy. I gotta go meet my brother. Listen, you don't understand. It's important that we talk. Look, I said I'm busy. We'll talk. We'll talk. This next scene is um, probably the uh, biggest scene in the deleted or alternate section. Uh, it was referred to as Jack's Dream. And we had shot a great deal of footage. Uh, we had a lot of uh, images in our mind. Uh, we wanted the dream to be epic, almost like a mini movie into itself. Uh, I had written uh, this one version of the dream. But along the way, uh, we realized that there was another version of the dream to be had. Um, Jack Hodnett, the actor who played Jack Franklin uh, in Honorbound, uh, really, really wanted to showcase uh, Jack's patriotic side. Unfortunately, the footage is uh, fairly damaged, uh, but when I put it together, when I edited it together, strangely enough, the, the damage kind of added to the mood of the dream. Uh, in any case, uh, the dream has never been seen by anyone. We ended up going with the first version of the dream. And so uh, I am very pleased to present to you the alternate version of Jack's dream. Thank you. 
Jack. What are you looking for? Sheriff. Sure. Look at Sheriff. She's not yet. You can't go looking at her like that. You'll freeze. You're a patriotic kind of guy, Jack. Why don't you try and this? Here's something else to keep you warm. The stars are trying to huh? Soon after his nightmare, Jack called me and asked if I could come over. So naturally, I came running. The next scene is simply entitled uh, Jack and Alex Before the Battle. It was meant to be uh, an honest conversation uh, showing our two uh, heroes uh, preparing for this very scary task. They were about to encounter Otto and they didn't know uh, what was going to happen. Uh, we had shot several versions of the scene and uh, in the end, during the editing process, there were two particular versions of the scene that I liked very much. And it was almost a toss-up between which one we were going to use. So the version that appeared in the miniseries was a slightly earlier take um, but now I'm going to present to you a slightly later take, um, and in many ways it's the same scene as in the miniseries, and yet there are many elements that are very different. Now where the hell are they? They'll be here, alright? They'll be here. Man, I don't like the situation at all, Jack. Think I do? No. That's not what I'm saying. <sighs> Sorry. It's all right. <sighs> Jack. I wonder what Dugan's telling Marcus right now. You know, he wants to ride with him separately. What do you think he's telling him? He's probably telling him all he needs to know. I have complete faith in him. So do I. All these years we played in this park, you know, with our game and everything, and I never ever thought we'd be in a situation like this. Now the game's real. Yeah. It's all right. Life throws you a few curves every now and then. I've learned to accept that the past few months. You're going to do all right, Jack. We just got to get through today. That's what counts. Okay. Together on this, man. Okay. We'll do it, bro. All right, they're here. All right, let's go. Whenever you shoot a, a movie, uh, a story, uh, you're always going to end up with more footage uh, than ultimately than what you need or can use. And that's good. You always want to have more. You never want to have less. Uh, but a lot of the B-roll footage, as we call it, was a lot of fun. And... Uh, if you're a fan of the miniseries, uh, I think just from a purely visual standpoint, 
uh, it's of interest. You know, it's kind of cool to see what didn't make it in. And it's just stuff that we cut for time. Uh, but it gives a little bit of depth to the characters and it shows you something that, you know, we weren't able to fit into the miniseries. We now arrive at a section of the story that we entitled The Final Battle. This was when all the good guys and all the bad guys were, were actually heading for a collision course. It was a huge scene in the script. It was a huge deal to film it in real life. We originally had our heroes in a different configuration and um, you know different people were teamed up. In this case, Jack was teamed up with Marcus in this earlier version of the script and when he encounters the bad guys they have sort of a separate adventure. Um, so a couple of moments did make it into the miniseries, but I'm going to present to you the original version of these scenes. Um, and again, it'll be familiar, yet very different. I hope you enjoy it. Excuse me, Mr. Franklin. I'd like a word with you. Someone's big. Come on, Marcus.
In the final battle, in an earlier draft, uh, Samantha got wounded, and I ended up taking out this scene because I felt she had gone through enough. It was just after getting kidnapped, I didn't want to then shoot her, particularly in light of what happened to the Melinda character. So, purely for interest, here's the scene where Samantha was wounded, and Marcus is trying to find some place to put her. Um, yeah, it deserves to be deleted, though. Real bad. Jesus Christ. Oh, Dugan's car's right over there. Come on, go get help, man. The next scene I'm going to show you involves uh, the character of Tommy Dugan and Jack. Uh, and again, it was taken from a slightly uh, earlier version of what we ultimately filmed. Um, in this scene, uh, Jack and uh, Dugan watch Otto get into his limo and they feel uh, helpless. You know, they feel that the bad guy is getting away with it. Uh, it was a scene that, you know, did not make it into the miniseries, but it was some good stuff, uh, nevertheless. Looks like there's a storm brewing, huh? Yeah. We're right in the middle of it. All right, let's get out. Come on. Have a busy day today, sir? Yeah, sure did. Get us out of here. Let's get out of here. God damn it! Good guys don't always win, do they? Nah, no, we'll get our revenge yet. Come on, let's find out what happened to Marcus and Alex. The next scene I'm going to show you are the field agents signing off after their mission is complete. Uh, these scenes were all cut basically for time and because it wasn't really necessary to see it. Uh, but there is an interest there, uh, primarily because it shows you who survived the final battle. So if you were curious, then these scenes provide the answer. reporting. All IntelliSub personnel capture. Yes, sir. For the bookend part of the story, we have older Alex telling his tale to the agent. Uh, for the most part, we kept, I would say, the vast majority of that conversation in the miniseries. But there were a couple of moments where I felt you didn't really need that information or you didn't really need to have the story interrupted. Uh, so the scenes that you're about to uh, listen to and see 
um, basically the conversation involving the BMW sequence when that car was chasing uh, the character of Alex and Eric through the streets. Uh, I wanted to provide a little bit of explanation about why the car was seemingly able to find us, you know, time and time again. Um, so again, I think it's of interest to uh, check it out. Fighting with a good friend must have been exhausting. It was, but I was full of adrenaline. And then everything changed suddenly. Go on. Right in the middle of this fight, a car shows up. And don't tell me how I knew, but this car represented some kind of terrible danger to both Eric and myself. The paranoia was running full speed that day. And I knew that our lives was suddenly on the line. The car was relentless. And we were trapped in the worst area of town possible. The roads were lined with obstacles, fences, and cement. We got separated, and we did our best to hide from this damn car. But whenever we thought enough time had passed, it returned. Crazy. Not in the least, considering what you had been through. As we were running for our lives, Eric and I suddenly were on the same team. It was weird. All my anger towards him, all those crazy thoughts of revenge, were gone in that instant. Now, let's get to what happened next. Must we? This scene shows uh, another version of the beach scene. Uh, Eric has passed away and the character of Alex is on a beach contemplating his, uh, his future and what just happened. This version uh, that you're about to see is different than the miniseries version because it was taken from an earlier draft of the script in which Alex did not know what had happened to uh, Melinda. And so after contemplating on the beach, he goes to head home and Dugan uh, sees him and informs him of what happened to Melinda. The footage was very badly damaged, and the version you're going to see was taken from a second, or possibly a third generation copy that I discovered, but it's the only one that was even remotely watchable. But clearly Alex knew what happened to Melinda in the miniseries version at this point in the story. Beach trying to get my thoughts together, you know. You know, uh, Eric's dead. Not that, it, not that it matters now, you know, but he got careless and he's dead. Who got him? Uh, my guess is Intelsum got him, but I don't know. It could be any agent. They almost got me, but I got lucky. Yeah, well, Melinda wasn't so lucky. She's alright. It's all right. Oh, what happened to Melinda? They shot her up. They caught her. Shot her up. How bad? She's in a hospital, but she'll make it. Jesus Christ, I can't believe this. Alex, it's almost over. Don't worry about it. 
Let's go. Come on. Where are we gonna go now? We gotta catch up with the gang. Is everyone all right? Did everyone make it? Everybody else made it fine. Thank God. It's almost over. Let's go. When uh, Agent James Dugan sees Jack, they have a conversation in the miniseries, uh, but you didn't really get to hear the conversation, uh, just a voiceover explaining what was being said. The reason for that was the, uh, the audio was terrible uh, from Agent Dugan's side. We never ended up using the scene, never refoleyed it or anything. So when I discovered the footage, I edited it as best I could, uh, but even restoring it with all the modern technology, you could really... You couldn't understand too much what he was saying. It sounded terrible. But anyway, just as a purely uh, historical interest, I'm going to present the scene to you with subtitles so you can follow along with the conversation and uh, see how it would have played out had the audio been better. Nice to see you again, sir. How you doing, Jack? Sorry to hear what happened to you. Your father and your sister have both been deeply missed. Your father was a good agent and a good friend. He was a good man. Listen, Jack, if you need anything, I need a way to reach me. Uh, I don't know if I'm out of line for asking you this, but uh, would it be possible for me to join your organization? Following your father's footsteps, huh? Listen, you think about it. If that's really what you want, well, then I'll see what I can do. Listen, Jack, you take care of yourself. Okay. Thanks for everything. Take care, huh? Tommy, can I have a word with you? Sure. The closing cemetery scene in the Honor Bound story was probably one of those moments that was changed several times. Uh, we had actually shot some of that footage very early on in the process, and then as the script changed and the story needs changed, we went back and refilmed it, and then we refilmed it again. So what you're about to see is actually, I think, the first time we shot with Agent Dugan uh, meeting his brother, uh, Tommy Dugan, uh, in the cemetery. He pulls up in the car, and, uh, you know, and then basically they, they start to chat. A couple of interesting points. One, you'll notice it's just the characters of Alex and Jack in this scene, not the whole group as what we ended up with in the miniseries. And probably the most notable change is, and because this was an early version, um, Agent James Dugan was Tommy's dad <laughs> and not his brother. Uh, ultimately, when we were looking at the, uh, the rushes of the, uh, of the, you know, the filming, uh, I thought uh, Alfred, who plays uh, James Dugan, looked too young to be Tommy's dad. And so ultimately I made the decision um, to make him his brother. So, yeah, so it's not a, uh, um, it's something that you could easily miss. But it's a big difference between having a character being someone's father being, and being someone's brother. So that was the most major difference. Um, sadly, the audio is extremely poor in sections, and so I subtitled it so you can still, you know, follow along. Uh, but again, this was a very, very uh, early version of the uh, cemetery meeting of the Dugan brothers.
guys. I had a lot of help. Who's that man? Thanks, Nicole. How you doing? How you doing, Tommy? Alright. Back home for a while. I've been staying a lot longer. You know, I kind of figured you'd been around for a lot longer than you've been let on. Somebody happened to that's right. You and your friends got involved in the case. Once again, we're talking about an earlier draft of uh, Honor Bound. Uh, in this draft, uh, Otto uh, had taken the project, thought he had won the day, but the joke was on him because the project that he had was a fake project. And uh, when he went to sell it, he got into trouble. Uh, in this scene here, Samantha uh, asks out loud uh, about the nature of the project and the cryptic answer of a pleasant surprise awaits him uh, is said by Jack and that's the reference to Otto's eventual fate. Uh, we ended up cutting out the scene uh, because it was just uh, not needed and uh, it was just a, a, an unnecessary subplot. Well guys, I need a ride home. Any volunteers? No, no, no. Leave it up you want. Oh, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. He's a madman. Oh, he's not that bad. Wait a second. I'm curious about something. If we get the real plans to your brother's friend, there's someone at the top of the Very unpleasant surprise. Well, gang, it's been fun, but I'm kind of looking forward to going home. Yeah, me too. Well, I got some company. Let's go. Great. Okay, well, we reached the end of our video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it and, uh, and got a little glimpse into the uh, sort of the process of putting this giant story together. It's been an absolute thrill doing it, and I'm so happy to be able to share this footage with everyone uh, because it's been sitting on a shelf for like 30 years, so it kind of lives again. Certainly, there was about 25 minutes of edited footage for the uh, original version of Honorbound that we had put together. It had a slightly different cast, um, and it was shot about two years earlier than the miniseries version. So I might put that together in a separate video. We'll see if people are interested uh, in wanting to see that. In the meantime, thank you so much for everyone that's checked out the miniseries, that's watching this video. Thank you for all the love and support. Uh, it means the world to me, and uh, I am so happy to have been able to bring uh, my soap opera series uh, from the 1980s into the modern era. So thanks again for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Do you understand what I'm trying to say, Sam? Because that is how I truly feel. I'm sure I'll see you again.